live. Good afternoon, good morning for you, Dr. Tom Marciano. I'm very happy to have you on the podcast. Um, after listening to you at the Higher Self podcast, I was very touched by the way you work. Uh, you are a chiropractor, you're an acupuncturist, but most of all, you are doing it with the philosophy, with the methods of the martial arts. And I can only only love people who do that. So um, I really wanted to talk to you. So I'm very happy that we do today. Could you introduce yourself a little bit for the listener? So for those who don't know me, my name is Dr. Thomas Marciano. Go by Dr. Tom or just Tom. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's funny because the only reason I ever got the title to begin with was just so I could teach martial arts and have some respect. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I'm... I'm not the typical martial arts teacher, you know? So the, the main reason why I even got into medicine was just to understand why what I was learning worked as well as it did. Cause I was never under the assumption that my system is the best system that I'm learning. I just wanted to learn something that worked well for me. So once I found a style that I liked, I trained it, I enjoyed it. But as I started competing with people all around the world at extreme levels, these people had way more years of experience on me and somehow I was winning. And I was like, okay, this is strange. Like, why is my system working where theirs isn't? And as I would notice certain things, I'm like, well, there's, they're missing this movement or this mentality or this perspective. I was like, well, I want to prove this. How do I do that? Well, medicine, understanding the body, all that stuff makes perfect sense. So that's kind of what led me into becoming a chiropractor, becoming an acupuncturist. Going down this path of medicine was purely just so I would have the title and the understanding of the human body at a deeper level. Uh, I never actually expected to use it to heal people. So <laughs> Fascinating. Yeah, somehow people uh, need those kind of uh, things to uh, respect you in some way, um, even though it changes nothing about the way you uh, treat people, of course. Yeah, um, I don't know how it is over in... You're in the Netherlands, correct? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how it is over there, but in the U.S., without titles and certifications, everyone's like, ah, this guy doesn't know what the heck he's talking about. Who's he? He hasn't trained with the best of the best from some mountaintop out over here. How could he possibly know anything, even though there's this universal consciousness that we all have access to? You know, it's it's a weird paradigm that people like can't get their mind around, that people can learn and dive in and understand that it all comes from within. So, yeah, I agree. Yeah, in the Netherlands, it, it maybe it's universally for for people in general um, that people want to see something that you have achieved, and mm -hmm. calling you yourself a doctor is some way of doing that. But um, yeah, I feel like there's a little shift going on as well. Maybe it's just in, in my circle. But when you um, when you show what you're doing and people see that it's working um it it starts to get some traction as well but i think it speaks it's, for itself exactly exactly but for the uh, regular uh, doctors in here um in, in the netherlands um a title s still is important because of the insurance uh, for mm -hmm. example i know that's a, i think that's a bit different um you're in costa rica right uh, right now we're in Texas. Oh, in uh, Texas. Oh, well, it's, yeah. it's two <laughs> magical places. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm bouncing between the two of them. We're building a retreat out there in Costa Rica right now. So Let's talk about that later, definitely. <laughs> um, sure. So what does a chiropractor do? Okay. That's um, a very deep question that's going to piss off some people and <laughs> um, excite others. Chiropractic is an art, like any medicine. Um, there's a lot of differences within the system itself. You can go to 100 different chiropractors and get 100 different philosophies. Um, from the evidence-based practices that I learned at a National University of Health Sciences, we're taught that, the, that it's a neurological um, component that we're activating. Basically, the adjustments aren't because bones are out of place and we're repositioning them. It's because we're upregulating the neurological systems by activating these parts that aren't moving properly 
or moving frequently enough to then get those like neurological impulses for the muscles or the organs that those nerves are linked to in the spinal system to actually activate, turn on, uh, just be more present, more aware because they become numb. Not in the sense of when you touch your skin and you don't feel it, but numb as in the sense of they need to be thawed out. They haven't been utilized in a long period of time because of past injuries that the body has protected itself around or compensation patterns that your body has designed itself around. Because at the end of the day, the body's main goal is to survive and reproduce. That's it. So it doesn't care about organ longevity. It doesn't care about any of that stuff. And if you're in a hyper sympathetic state where your body is stressed in fight or flight, as people like to call it, your body is always going to steal nutrients, resources, and hormones from organ function, from tissue function, from all of that, and shift it to the muscles to be in a hyper state of contraction, to be able to run or fight from a threat, even if it's perceived. Your body doesn't know the difference between a, a hungry tiger that's about to eat you and the inability to pay a utility bill next month. It doesn't know the difference. And that's why people, they get done with their work at a cubicle for nine to five. And they're like, man, I feel like I worked out all day. I'm too tired to work out. But I didn't do anything. This hyper stress state keeps your body in this contracted, like you're holding a band all day long. Eventually, you're going you're gonna to lose and your body's going to be exhausted and fatigued. and You're not going to have the energy to do the things that you need to do. So the chiropractic component of the work I do is targeting those systems. It's trying to build safety in the body, showing the body these areas that are very tight and scared to move, that it's safe to move again. And we do that by repetitive visits in a systematic way to slowly show the body like, hey, look, I know you're scared of moving in these patterns, but it's actually safe and it's more beneficial in longevity purposes to be here. And over time, because with each treatment, your body's going to want to go back to what's safe to it, it's going to start learning and realize, oh, this is actually safe. This is actually more efficient. I'm actually not using as much energy. So it's like a, a slow education process to teach the body how to maintain this position that it's at. Wow. wow. That sounds very powerful and uh, very healing as well. And uh, that's what I heard from uh, the other podcast you uh, visited as well, is uh, that you really want to... Um, learn your patients to heal on themselves when they visited you is that right yes there's a there's a lot of schools of thought within chiropractic some believe that you only have to adjust um, the upper cervical and the body will innately fix itself which is true the body is powerful it knows how to heal itself and doing these adjustments on this area will upregulate the biggest influx into the, the nervous system to get your whole body to just settle and relax. The thing I don't like about that is if the body is naturally able to heal itself, why do we need to do anything at all? So that, that philosophy does have its own limitations that I don't fully get behind. Same thing with my philosophy. They're talking about the fact that we're not actually moving bones and we're only upregulating the nervous system. It's like, yes, but why can't we do it in other ways? Why is it only through adjustments that we're able to do that? And why with some healthy patient that's super active doing all the things is still having the shoulder pain come back no matter how many times I adjust the CT junction? Why in this unhealthy diabetic patient did one single adjustment get rid of their headaches completely and now it's stable and staying that way? There's a component that we're overlooking, which is the soft tissue, the, the ligaments, the tendons. Um, the the mind muscle connection is so much deeper than only the nervous system in my opinion and i feel like a lot of chiropractic is fighting itself right now because they're so stuck in their dogmatic ways of it's the innate intelligence it's the nervous system it's this it's that and we're just only one tool of a whole system everybody's right and everybody's wrong and until we can come together and find the innate truths within all of our different practices our profession's always going to be looked at as a laughing stock because at the end of the day, we can't come to a cohesive belief about how to fix the body. And we're all having great benefits to like 80% success rate, give or take, which is still way better than the medical paradigm of surgeries and prescription pills. But if 
we can work together and actually come to a conclusion of what we're actually doing and prove it over and over again, because we have all the capabilities nowadays to do this. We just have to step out of that e ego driven, I'm right, you're wrong mentality. We'll actually be able to start moving medicine in the direction it's supposed to be, which is empowering our patients to actually teach them how to fix themselves, how to maintain their health, how to make the lifestyle changes that are actually beneficial for them and not just because this study says this or this um, has been beneficial for that or this supplementation works for these situations. Because life isn't math. Um, life is this beautiful, artistic, undescribable situation that can only be described in poems and then even can't be captured in that direction. So when we look at health in a very, if this, then this mathematical equation, we're always going to be missing the boat for a portion of the population. And I don't think that's how medicine should be practiced. I agree. And I think that's a very uh, special way to look at it, at least when you compare it to conventional uh, medicine, um, like you described earlier. Um, when you talked about um, treating a patient, you talked about safety. Um, mm -hmm. How does that feel, safety in your own body? I mean, that's quite, quite an abstract question, but maybe we can um, explore that. I want you to close your eyes for a second. Okay. All right. And, and people listening at home, you can follow along with me here. I want you to feel your shoulders right where your neck attaches. Mm hmm now, as you start feeling that, I want you to take a deep breath into that tension that you feel in your shoulders and feel it expanding out like a balloon. And as you exhale, just allow that tension to leave like a feather in the wind. Good. Now breathe into those shoulders again, nice and deep. And this time, as you breathe in, say, I am strong. And as you exhale, I am safe. Good. Feel how your shoulders just drop. That's safety in the body. All throughout the day, we're always worried about what we need to do next, what we have to do to be able to pay these bills, what we have to do to be able to make our friends or family, our loved ones proud or accepting of us or so we can fit into society in some way or another that we're enough. And these stressors are the same perceived tensions as a tiger in front of you. And that's why our bodies are so wound up and stressed. Like you'll see people where their shoulders are up to their ears. And as you do these breath works, as you show your body it's strong and safe and trust it, you feel these surges of energy, these tingles through your body, this cold or warm heat, depending on what level you're working with the chi as they talk about it. It, it's just energy. It's just blood flow. It's just oxygen, nutrients coursing through your veins. You're, you're taught in school, we have arteries and veins. So you, you look at it as these rivers. But what is actually the thing is there's millions of these things called capillaries, these like little tributaries that come off of the rivers. So like you'll have the main artery but there's thousands of streams that go off of that into every different part of your body. And that's how blood actually escorts nutrients to the skin, the muscles, all the different tissues and organs through these extremely tiny, tiny pathways. If there's any tension in your body at all, now the heart has to pump that much harder to get the force for it to squeeze through these little holes to be able to release whatever it needs to at the end of the stream and then pull out whatever it's not supposed to be there and flush it out. So if you have tension in your body, you're not getting these nutrients flowing freely to all the different extremities. You'll see uh, it's very common in women because they have this beautiful ability to have emotional intelligence that men can never tap into at the depths that they can, which puts them susceptible to stressors that men will never experience. Um, it's very common for them to have Raynaud's disease where their hands will always be cold or their feet will always be cold or they'll have discoloration here. All it is is because the blood isn't flowing there properly. And if their body is constantly tense, how is that supposed to happen? It's like throwing a bunch of trees in a river and then expecting the river to flow freely. 
So that breath that I just brought you through, just to show your body that it's safe, releases that tension. The heart rate doesn't have to pump nearly as fast or as strong anymore because now that there's no tension on the muscles, all those capillaries are more open. So now there's easier time for that blood to just naturally flow out there and you feel it. And as that happens, you feel this surge of energy that the traditional Chinese medicine and martial arts always talk about as qi. All it is is training your body how to utilize energy, how to allow it to get to the extremities more fully. And when you look at it in a martial arts sense, if uh, force comes from mass times velocity, my punch is only going to be as strong as how heavy I am and how fast I can move it, which is going to be limiting. So I can only go so fast. Well, now if I can add more mass to it by relaxing the body, relaxing that muscular tension, now I have more blood there, which is more volume, it's more mass. So that's all they're talking about when they're talking about chi. It's more energy. It's more everything inside of our body naturally there present that I'm now able to utilize to apply more force to the opponent. Wow. You have a very captivating way of uh, of speaking. So thank you for that. And thank you for... Wow. Uh, uh, it, 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 it made me feel safe. So... Um, Thank you. I want to give that give that back to you. Um, it's very interesting what you said about chi as well. Um, my acupuncturist talks talks about it uh, a lot. Um, could you elaborate more on on the on the chi? Uh, because oh, I yeah. find that very interesting. Uh, <laughs> what do you want to know? Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the, what I find uh, in podcasting the most interesting things i want to discover are the hardest things to ask questions about because there are such broad life topics uh, yeah. chi is one of them um i think it is a topic that is uh that should get more attention in the western society um mm -hmm. yeah l let's start somewhere and um yeah. yeah please so what i just talked about is a good uh good introduction to it um, to give you a little bit more, I guess, uh, an esoteric hypothesis that I have. Um, water molecules, they have attraction towards one another. So you can look up uh, science experiments where if you have two tubes next to each other and you draw water up, it'll actually have almost a magnetic force in the other tube that'll pull that water up alongside with it because they want to be attracted towards one another. So what I feel like chi is, is the um, energy production between the friction caused by blood moving through our body. And so the, the smoother and cleaner and um, quicker that that blood can flow, the more energy you're producing. So Basically, you have arteries and veins. They're always running parallel with one another everywhere. And you also have a nerve there. That's just how it works. But for this situation, you have arteries and veins. Well, they discuss chi as being electrical. So now you have a cord that can capture that um, electricity and then send it through the body right next to these two pathways of alternating currents, basically, of fluid. Blood's full of water. So now you have one being forced for, by the heart out to the extremities, and then it's being pulled back through contraction, relaxation of muscles, through gravity, through pressure of this blood forcing through that's causing this one to come back. There's a lot of components that are causing the flow of blood, but as they're passing one another in opposite directions, that's going to pull them closer to one another because the arteries and veins are going to want to touch because of how thin the layers are of the arterioles and the, the capillary walls and whatnot. So as this is moving, it's going to cause a friction, which friction causes like heat, which is just electricity. Uh, when you start doing any type of martial arts training, you feel this heat generating. Like that's what you're looking for when you're cultivating chi is this specific breath work that you're doing while you're doing specific movements, whether they're static or plyometric in nature. It's all about the pattern of the breath, the intent of the breath, and then the uh, contraction and relaxation of the muscles. So you're combining so many different facets of uh, movement within the body 
that you have control over and that you don't have control over. And you're learning how to one, be aware of them and then simultaneously connect them in the most efficient way possible. And as you do that, you start feeling this heat generated and you start feeling this energy generating. And then you're like, oh my gosh, I can tap into this at any point in my life. So then you go into the real world and you're like, man, I'm really tired or I have to help my friend move. And you can start tapping into this power. Now you don't need martial arts for this, but martial arts is the, I feel the most accurate and uh, quick way to train it in an efficient manner. Kind of like how our uh, programs create doctors. It's like, look, there's a million ways you could become a doctor, but we have these ways in place because it's the most efficient guaranteed way. Like there's a million ways you can learn how to utilize chi without ever needing help from anybody. But martial arts has been battle tested for thousands of years. It's been tried and true. It, the traditional ways are there for a reason. Um, a lot of it's been watered down and distilled, but that's for another conversation. <laughs> um, but look at, uh, there's news articles of women in car accidents that lift cars to get their baby out from underneath it. And then they're just destroyed for weeks after because of how much stress it put on the bones of their body. Like, but the, they're able to tap into that energy innately. And we all are, we've all tapped into it when we're working jobs. We don't want to work in when we're dealing with situations we don't want to deal with when we're in those fight or flight life uh, threatening moments where it's we are going to die or not like you tap into that energy your breath becomes what it needs to or you freeze up it's one or the other and you're able to tap into this uh, powerful chi as they call it energy source that we all have within us whether you have control of it consciously or not that's a different story whether you want to even have control of that it's another story there's a people do it through yoga People do it through breath work. People do it through martial arts. There's thousands of ways to get here. Um, the main thing is, is that you're cultivating this connection of conscious and unconscious bodily functions in a way that's actually promoting an amplification of energy and nutrients and resources in your body. So that's all chi is. It's latent. It's dormant. Um, it's present at the, the lowest levels without any work. It's how you function on the day-to-day -day basis. But if you want to step into that abundance of energy that we're all searching for without needing any kind of assistance from drugs, alcohol, stimulants, then you have to actually cultivate it like anything else in life. Sorry, you lagged a bit at the, at the end. Sorry. But <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, It it sounds like such a logical thing to um, to educate on schools and 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 in life more often uh, than it is right now. Um, it sounds like something that should be one of the things we um, grow up with uh, because uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so it's so crazy to that it that it is so uncommon uh, among Western societies. Yeah. Um, when you talk about chi, um, we spoke uh, briefly about chiropractic. You being a chiropractor, you mm -hmm. are also an acupuncturist. Uh, mm -hmm. How does that overlaps with each other? Okay, so the acupuncturist and chiropractic specifically. Yeah, and in chi combined. Yeah. Okay. Um, the acupuncture is very, very fascinating. So the only reason I even began learning acupuncture is because I didn't believe it worked. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know, irony. Uh, I'm a very huge skeptic about everything. I, I hated doctors growing up. Um, I remember going to a dentist early high school and they told me that I had like 13 cavities and I needed to get all these things filled. And I just didn't sit right with me. So I asked my mom to take me to a different dentist and they told me my teeth were fine. And I have one tooth that might have a cavity coming up. And so stuff like that just always, I was just so resistant to it because it didn't feel genuine. It didn't feel right. A doctor would come in, look at me and tell me that I have this, I need to be doing this, or I'm never allowed to train again. I injured my foot fighting. Um, 
and they told me I need surgery and I can never fight again. Good luck ever doing anything jumping wise because it's never going to be structurally sound again. And six weeks later, with some Tai Chi movements, I was not only walking, but jumping around, training and fighting again. So I'm, I've had a very large run in with the dark side of medicine in this world. And it's not only MDs. Chiropractors are just as bad. PTs are just as bad. Energy workers like Reiki practitioners, uh, massage therapists, like we have to remember that we need to stop categorizing the profession as evil and realize that humans are innately amazing and evil at the same time. Like it's within all of us. So it's not these professions that are bad. It's just the people practicing them for the reasons they're practicing them are what's bad and manipulative and coming from a scarcity versus an abundance uh, mindset and practice. So like I know some MDs that are amazing people doing amazing work for the world and they are fighting the same stuff that we're fighting. And then I know MDs that I can't believe they have a license. And I know single moms that know more about medicine just because of their child's uh, health condition that they've had to learn how to deal with themselves because they can't afford it. They know more about medicine than I would say 20 to 30 percent of practicing doctors. You know, it's just the the world is such a weird place where titles are bringing in weight that they shouldn't be, that it's it's more about the title than what the person's actually doing. But again, I digress. Um, mm-hmm. so, <laughs> chiropractic and acupuncture. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Back to the question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the acupuncture, as I started exploring it, I really just wanted to understand this philosophy around the martial arts system because traditional Chinese medicine, traditional Chinese martial arts, it was all what I already had done. I did 13 years of martial arts in the same systems And a lot of the fighting is all about targeting these acupoints that allow you to penetrate into certain areas to cause harm. I was like, wow, why does that work? And then I start learning the acupuncture points. I'm like, oh, this works because this allows you to upregulate fire that's lacking in the heart. So if I actually strike that, it's going to actually dampen it more, which is going to lead to a heart attack. Like that makes sense now. Now I understand why these points are so dangerous and deadly because they're actually used for health. And that's what I talk about with most of my practicing doctors that I talk to that we get into arguments about. I'm like, guys, if you're trying to sell me on a a product technique or service that is only good and has no downside, that's not a healing practice. That's a, that's fake. Like there's, this is just bullshit because if it can't damage or hurt somebody, it can't heal because for it to heal, it has to be at some dosage dangerous. And that's one of the main components that I think a lot of medicine is chasing is this like magic pill that can fix everything and has no side effects because human error leads to hurting somebody. And nobody wants that. Nobody wants to be responsible because nobody wants to be sued. Nobody wants to hurt anybody because nobody wants to be the one that has to tell a loved one, hey, sorry, you know, most of the time I can save people from heart attacks, but this time I couldn't. And the your father or husband is dead now because I wasn't competent enough. You know, nobody wants to have that conversation. And at some point we need to trust our professions to be able to make those choices and decisions as terrible as that is. And that's going to bring up a lot of pain for people, but doctors aren't practicing as doctors anymore because they're scared of the consequences. And what that causes is those consequences we're trying to avoid to happen more frequently because the, the death rates on surgeries and these medical conditions are higher than they've ever been. And it's because people are on these medications that they shouldn't be for long periods of time because nobody's willing to do the dangerous things up front that could actually heal it and solve it. Um, they're, they'd rather just kind of prolong it along the way until eventually it's too much. And well, He's old, so that's why he's dying. Um, So as you start looking at acupuncture, you start realizing that these points are extremely dangerous because they're in locations that allow you to upregulate or downregulate specific organ functions. And that's why it's so powerful because you're basically playing with, you ever see in a house the, the breaker board that controls all the power to all the different switches? That's basically what acupuncture points are. 
you're going in and you're like, hey, the stove isn't working and you're you're toggling that switch like, hey, brain, like, let's make this work again. Like, why are you ignoring this? Oh, it's because you're sending too much energy over here. Let's loosen this blockage. Let's allow this to flow. They they attribute meridians that all the acupuncture points are on as rivers. And then so what's flowing through a river? Water. Well, the water is our blood. It's our uh, it's our uh, CNF fluid, our cerebral or CSF fluid, our cerebral spinal fluid that flows through the nervous system and the spinal cord and the brain. It's uh, the energy. It's the hormones. It's the it's just all the components that move through our body are along these different rivers. And if any of them are blocked, it's going to cause a downstream effect, which then is going to cause an outward symptom, which is what we experience of pain, discomfort, GI dysfunction, increased or decreased heart rate, autoimmune conditions, skin conditions. All of this is just a manifestation of the lack of flow properly through the body that's allowing nutrients to either be taken in and digested, utilized, transformed, and then transported and utilized appropriately. Uh, It's extremely complicated. And when you start actually trying to write down a like get a big whiteboard and start trying to write out this spaghetti chart. You'll look like those guys in the crime scene movies with like strings all over the place. And they're like, I swear this guy's doing it, you know, and <laughs> yeah. it's like this dude's mad. He's insane. Well, that's how our body distributes and utilizes nutrients that we put in our body through food, through grounding, through touch, through lotions, through fragrances, through brushing our teeth. Everything you put in your body has to be distributed, transformed and utilized somehow. And uh, the Chinese medicine standpoint is through meridians. Like they talk about us as being uh, emotional particle clouds in a, a meat skin suit is basically the easiest way to describe it. And the second you have an emotional response in the body and you don't allow it to move, it becomes stagnant and trapped. Most people are scared of dealing with it. Men for instance, are scared of anger because at some point in your life, you've been told that you're not allowed to be that way because you're going to hurt somebody or you've lost control of your anger and you've actually hurt somebody and now you're terrified of it. So anytime anger starts coming up, you squash it because you've never been taught how to utilize it as energy, as power in a safe manner. You, you're scared of it. So you hold it in. Oh, well, what's that happening when things are held? It's stagnant. And what happens to stagnant things? You ever see a stagnant river? It smells. It's full of muck and decay. And it's just gross. The second that starts flowing, it's beautiful again. It allows you to bring life and just everything that you need downstream again. The water becomes crystal clear. Flowers stop blooming and blossoming. Trees grow taller. You can grow fruit and food out of the land because the the water's flowing the rich minerals from the mountains to the the fields animals are able to find water to then procreate and whole ecosystems thrive like that is us like we are nature it's the same exact thing so when you start looking at our emotional states and you're like you're not allowed to be mad you're not allowed to be sad you're not allowed to cry like It's not weakness. It's just an emotion that you're supposed to experience, allow it to process, and then utilize that for whatever beauty that you can create of it. Now, the problem with that is now people take it too far. Now you see people in this stuck cycle of being super emotional. You'll see people always crying, always like being angry. It's like, well, no, now you're just on the other extreme. Like (laughs) you still have to learn how to control it and have discipline around it and utilize it for good. It's okay to feel anger, but it's not okay for me to hurt somebody that doesn't deserve to be hurt. Just because they hurt my feelings doesn't give me permission to hit them. It also doesn't give me permission to hold in my anger, but I'm allowed to have boundaries. I'm allowed to say, look, I don't respect how you're treating me. And if you're going to treat me like this, you're not allowed in my life. And that's fine. Like I'm allowed to experience that anger and then be like, well, why was I triggered that way? Okay, now I know in the future how to deal with this. Now this is fuel for me becoming the stronger, better, more powerful, more compassionate, loving version of myself. And that's where chiropractic and acupuncture comes in. 
because everything I just talked about, you'll never get from a chiropractor. Like that's not what we talk about. We're talking about range of motion. We're talking about pains. We're talking about headaches. You know, that's it. Like we're, we're getting your body to move and feel better. But if there's an emotional component, emotional stagnation, no matter how many times I adjust your cervical, it's never going to get better because you're repressing anger because you're pissed off about how your father treated you or how your boss is treating you or how your spouse is treating you. That repression is going to cause a, a crazy downstream effect of how your hormones are being utilized and you're going to have pain. So sometimes all it is is a neck adjustment that needs to fix people, but not always. And what I found is that that emotional component no matter how much I promise or know that this adjustment is going to fix this pain for that subset of the population that has neck pain because of trapped anger or that uh, subset of the population that has sciatic pain and hip pain and low back pain because they were raped when they were a kid and they've never allowed themselves to process that or forgive that or even understand that. And now for the rest of their life, they can't even enjoy sex because it hurts, but they can't maintain relationships because they can't have sex, so they can't be intimate with a partner, like that downstream effect is astronomical. And no amount of side posture adjustments is going to cure that. So that's where the chiropractic acupuncture philosophy really flows, because I adjust the body, I show it that it's safe, that it can move. But now I go in at the rivers, and I start clearing out the rivers, and I guide their mind to feel safe, like I just guided your shoulders to feel safe. And then you can feel your muscles relax and open up after I just gave you the most intense neurologically stimulating motion that I'm that I know that I've learned how to do. Not saying chiropractic is the only way to do it. There's Reiki workers that can work with energy that I does not make any sense to me. I can't do it. That doesn't mean it's not real. And just because I've met nine out of 10 Reiki people that are bullshit and don't know what they're doing. That doesn't mean that the 10th one that I've met that's doing magic isn't doing magic. It just means that they're doing something and tapping into something that I'm not capable of understanding, and that's fine. But it works. And if it works, I'm all for it because I'm seeing it in front of me. I don't care what certification, what title, what scientific study says yes or no. That patient that has been having this problem for 15 years that now can you know, go to the bathroom and pass a bowel movement for the first time because the person moved their hands in the aura above them, I'm in, you know? I don't care how we heal people. Let's fucking heal people the way that it's supposed to, you know? So my way works for me and it works for my patients. And I would say about 30% of the people that come to me, I refer to other people because I know I'm not capable of working with them. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. Sometimes I know I could help to some extent, but it's still not enough to get them where they need to go. So there's other people out there that are better suited for their unique situations. Um, so that gives you a little bit of how they, they go in a very long winded, but the short version. <laughs> <What? laughs> <laughs> well, again, it was, uh, you describe it beautifully. Um, what I really like about it and what resonates with me, and that's, also why I wanted to uh, invite you is because um, everything in nature, everything in life flows naturally. And um, that is what the philosophy of this podcast is about as well, is instead of driving um, the motion, remove what stands in the way. And I feel like that is exactly what you're doing with your practice and with your work. Um, yes. And... Yeah, it's fascinating. It, it even gives me goosebumps talking about it. <laughs> it's, so yeah. it's so beautiful because you you can see it in every in everything in in yeah. love, in mm -hmm. in nature, in your body, in martial arts, and that's what I wanted to talk about as well. Is because people usually do not think about flow when they are looking at martial arts. No, nope. <laughs> they are um, thinking like so much pain and so much hurt, and of course uh, there are really a lot of types of martial arts um yeah. maybe we can um explore different the whole spectrum and then uh bring it down to left and right or right and left sorry yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, no, you're good. yin and yang yeah um, what is martial arts for you uh, martial arts is life it's 
it's a uh, it's an accelerator. It's a lifestyle. Um, it's true medicine. It's awareness. It's a. Uh, it's how you learn how to communicate with yourself. It's learning another language, but it's the, it's the language of self, is the best way to describe it. Um, I never ha had heard somebody <laughs> describe it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Please proceed. <laughs> uh, so, think about this. Kung Fu uh, specifically comes from uh, Taoism, Chinese philosophies, uh, basically yin and yang. Um, if you are trying to understand and live with true compassion, with true peace, with true humility, like how do you experience that? You don't do it through avoiding the, the bowels of humanity. You do it by training those things. So you have to learn the art of war to understand the art of peace. Because with duality, it's two sides of the same coin. Um, so many people talk about this. The, the fact is you can't choose to be peaceful. You can't choose to be kind if that's the only thing you're capable of doing. It's not a choice. Now you're doing it out of fear because you know you can't defend yourself. Because you know you can't defend your options. You can't defend your opinions. You can't defend your actions. Like that isn't peace. That isn't love. It's, it's out of necessity. It's out of scarcity. And that's why we're in the states we're in because so many people are so disempowered from what they're truly capable of because they've never had the privilege or opportunity. I can't say never. They, your whole life you have the choice to face this, but their whole life they've been told that they don't have to, that it's okay, that they can stay the way they are, that it's fine, that the rest of the world has to bend and mold to them. And that's not how the world works. Everything in nature has to carve out its slot and has to choose to be a present part uh, to participate or else it, it doesn't exist. You, you have to earn your spot and you have to transmute energy into something that's amplified that more than one person can benefit from. And right now, everybody is a taker without even realizing they're a taker by act practicing peace. The, the monks understood that if they trained their body to the physical extremes, it allows their mind to go to a further phys physical extreme, a mental extreme. Basically, if I'm learning peace, I can only understand peace as far as I've understood war and harm and damage. I can only strengthen my mind as far as I've understood um, my body's capabilities and what it is able to push by. If I stop training the body and only train the mind, I only read books, only read books, only read books, Eventually, I'm going to hit a rate limiting state where I haven't applied any of this to the physical world. So I don't trust it no matter how much I tell you I trust it. And it's going to keep me there. And you see that a lot with intellectuals these days. You see scientists saying this is the only way. It's proven. Look, I'm showing you right here in this like hyper condensed, all the external environmental factors removed state that under this flashlight in these conditions this is how it is and it's like yeah that's great but in the real world that's not how it works and then you see those two people conflicting because the person in the real world isn't training their mind because they don't give a fuck they're like i don't need to understand this magic i feel the magic and that's why you see the the conscious community running away from society they're like fuck this i'm gonna go build a commune out in the woods grow my own food practice my religion and stop caring about the, the matrix because this is the world that I understand. I understand it's all magic. I understand I'll never understand it. So I'm going to stay away from it. And then they just butt heads because they don't understand each other. They never train the opposite. The scientist isn't out in the field, like trialing their studies. They're in the lab proving it. And then the people in the field aren't in the labs looking at it under, under a microscope because they're experiencing the magic and they're like, ah, this is just too much for me. I don't care. I'm just going to enjoy it and live life. So 
the the martial art the the monks they would practice their religion and they would practice the martial arts so they strengthen the mind they strengthen the body they they build them together and they build off of each other build 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 and that's how you get this circular with one in the other the yin and yang the grand ultimate the supreme ultimate the taiji like all of that is that symbol which is everything is one and they create each other and when you look at ancient egypt and the kemet what they say as well is it's duality science wasn't its own thing uh religion spirituality wasn't its own thing they were two sides of the same coin building off of one another so science proves the magic of spirituality and then spirituality allows you to openly expand and find new questions which then science finds ways to answer which then you get to then go deeper into your spirituality and your understanding of consciousness and i feel like this is the first time that a huge population has been going through this process where everybody's starting to wake up to it where everybody's having these conversations where before covid this was not a common thing this conversation we're having about science, religion, spirituality, martial arts, you couldn't find it. And if you could, the person that was there was presumed as a, a crazy person, you know? Um, it's just, it's the life has changed so much these last few years. And COVID was like an amplifying magnifying glass on top of that. And it really drew out that in people. But again, when you look at martial arts, it's, it's an accelerator. It, it takes your body and it shows you every limiting belief your mind has ever put on you. And it shows your body how to say, fuck you, I am way more capable than you think you are. And every time you're going through that pain, you start becoming, you start building a relationship with it to where it's not a signal of fear anymore. It's a signal that can teach you so many things. Everybody thinks of pain as one thing, pain. But pain has so many layers to where it's pain because you're pushing, pain because you're growing. Think about growing pains as a child. Nobody looks at a child and says, stop doing that, you're hurting yourself. Hmm. No, you're like, yay, you're growing. It's okay that your arm's longer than your feet. Like, it'll catch up. Like, you know, but for some reason we get to adults and we're just like, ah, no, pain. Ah, I don't want that in my life. Like, no, pain has so many lessons in it. And you don't learn that until you learn it. And the only way that I've learned was one through chasing it. Um, and that doesn't do anything good for anybody. Yeah, you'll get there eventually. But damn, have I had to do a lot of healing around that. <laughs> but the martial arts taught me that you don't have to force yourself to it. First of all, the way the world works, you're going to experience pain. So why, why run for it? Why look for it? Like, a loved one is going to die eventually. Uh, my friends are going to take advantage of me. Uh, my business is going to have hardships or fail. I'm going to be struggling for money. Uh, like all, all of this stuff, because if you can get it, it's going to be taken away at some point. Like pain inevitably comes, but also pain only lasts like a storm lasts. Eventually, like the storm has to stop. So even when I'm in the pain, I'm like, it's okay. Because like, that means I'm in the retraction phase and this beautiful wave is going to come from it. So martial arts teaches you how to like talk the language of pain. It teaches you how to differentiate in your mind where your limitations are, what your body's capable of. When your mind is limiting you from stepping into what you could be capable of, it teaches you like, you know what? I'm going to take this business opportunity. Because I know, I feel it in my body that I'm safe. And regardless of the outcome, I know because I feel it. Not because my mind tells me. Nobody trusts this because it leads you wrong all the time. Because this only acts from scarcity. It'll tell you magical things. But it'll also tell you all your deepest, darkest fears. It's supposed to work that way. But it's up to our body to be trained to be able to discern that. And martial arts teaches you that. Because you hold these stances for minutes on end. And you feel your body giving out. You feel it freaking out. You feel your heart stressing that you're not getting enough oxygen and that you're going to tear or rip or break or crumble. And then you have to face that mental state of, oh man, I'm not good enough. Because look at everybody else. Everybody else is doing it and I'm not. So that means I'm a piece of shit. I'm weak. I'm this. And you're like, 
wait, no, I'm not. Because yesterday I couldn't do this and now I'm doing it longer. So who gives a fuck about everybody else? Yeah, somebody else out there is making 10 million a month when I can't even do whatever a month, you know. But that doesn't matter anymore because I've trained through martial arts my ability to discern what I'm capable of. And now I get to live out the life that they talk about where like you don't have to judge yourself versus anybody else. You don't have to be comparing, which is the thief of joy. You get to live your path. You get to watch your step every forward, every step forward and understand and appreciate your journey and ultimate presence. And that's what martial arts gave me. And that's why I'm so adamant about teaching it to my patients, to teaching it to the world, teaching it to children like this. This gives you the ability to understand that you don't have to be scared every time your body hurts. Think about how many people run off to the emergency room every time they have a headache. That's crazy to me. When I went to Costa Rica and stayed with these tribes and you talk to them, they don't you ask them about back pain, they don't even understand what that is. Hmm. Because if it isn't debilitating to them, it doesn't matter. Like they don't have these problems. And even if they do, they don't even give it power because it, there's no place for it in their body. They're like walking around with broken ankles and tumors growing out of their forehead. And they're like, what are you talking about? I'm fine. Like I just went and hunted and I just climbed a tree and I just built a hut and I'm going to do it again tomorrow. Like none of that matters to them because they know that their body is like their body. And when their their job here is to give back, is to amplify. And the second they can't do that anymore, they get to do the greatest thing, which is then give their body back to nature, which then allows more life to be sprung from it. Like there's never a point where they aren't appreciating of the beginning and end of every closed loop system that is mandatory for harmony to exist in nature. And they're 100% willing to just give 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 from that compassionate state which we are so disembodied from in the west um, wow Th that is so interesting um that the disability a disabilitating part which you just described is um we're we in the west are so focused on fixing it because we want to maintain because we want to receive more life yeah. and um to be focused on that 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 takes away so much joy and life because you're uh taking away your own flow of life uh, by having that perspective is what i believe um but what, what i also find interesting in what you just said is um from the monks and the martial arts mm -hmm. um, feeling your own body uh, mm -hmm. to know the limits and to know where you can go but that requires some bodily awareness right and i don't think i don't i feel like that's not thought to people so how could people start at the root and feel what they need you have to be okay with being bad most people don't even know how to learn, let alone are okay with being bad at something. I see it all the time. I teach a free class every Wednesday and my population dwindles from anywhere from one to two people showing up to 15 to 20 people showing up. And some people are very consistent. Some people come once and never come back. And what I found over the years is that the people that don't come back are because they are not aware of how to be kind to themselves. They are not aware of how to be, how to learn, how to make mistakes, how to be embarrassed. Like all of these things are so mandatory. Imagine if I took you into the gym, you've never deadlifted before. And I was like, all right, we're doing 800 pounds today. This is how, how you're doing it. All right. And I would expect that of you. Your body wouldn't even be able to lift it. Right. Would you expect yourself to be able to lift it? You'd be like, this guy's crazy. I'm never working with him again, right? But you have that same expectation on yourself, which is just insane to me. Like you would tell me I'm crazy to do that. But then people come into class and they can't hold a horse stance. Even They can't even open up their hip to get there. But then they expect themselves to be able to do this art form that's extremely challenging, extremely difficult. Just because it looks easy does not make it easy by any means. You can ask any martial artist 
what they like to do. And I guarantee you, they will not tell you traditional stance training. <laughs> That's the last thing on the list, but it's mandatory. And it's mandatory because it trains your body over time, how to be strong. And it trains your mind how to stop being a limiting factor in your life. And these are the disciplines that are passed on that are totally ignored. Now, most of those people that never come back are not okay with that. So if you want to start, you have to give yourself permission to be bad. Like this is an ancient art that was practiced multiple times a day with very strict lineages, with very strict practices, with very strict dietary, philosophical, spiritual, um, lifestyle practices all combined. It was everything because it was their way of life. It was life or death. That was what they had to do to survive. And then you're out here trying to pick it up as a hobby once or twice a week. Like, give yourself a break, man. It's going to take a few days. Like, you're not just going to come out and pick it up and start doing tornado kicks, let alone be able to open up the hips to be able to sit structurally in a position where you're learning how to use your breath to hold your body instead of your muscles to hold your body. Like, does that even make sense to you? Like, could you imagine curling a bicep curl, like curling a weight, doing a bicep curl without using your bicep? No. Okay. <laughs> I can teach you how to do that. That's what martial arts teaches you is how to use the ligaments, tendons, breath, energy instead of the muscle. Oh, really? It's not easy. It takes time. But that's what people are trying to accomplish. And that's the unrealistic expectation that they hold on themselves. And they don't realize that that's what martial arts main goal is to get rid of. It's to teach you how to trust the universal self in you, the powerful self in you, instead of the human self, the limiting mind self that's constantly like just throwing your life in all kinds of directions. And if you're sitting here listening to this and you constantly are finding yourself living the same routines, the same issues, the same problems are hitting you over and over again. You're like, why? I've done all the work because you haven't done the work. You've done the work that's been taught by scared people, teaching scared people, scared tactics that have been learned through scared environments. That's the world we live in. If you want to do the real work, you need to do the work that's been taught and battle tested through the most intensive fear situations known to man, which is taking lives in a war scenario, watching death and decay around you nonstop and being able to stay in a calm state, that is the work that teaches you how to become the most peaceful person. That is the work that teaches you compassion because that work has been proven time and time again to be efficient. That's why these traditional martial arts are so powerful. That's why these fighters that go into the UFC or boxing that look so unique and different from everybody else win when everybody else can't touch them. And it's because they're doing something different than everybody else. They're practicing an art, not math. And that's how a lot of modern uh, fighting practices are these days. Even the old traditional ones, like I can show you Kung Fu schools that are very mathematical these days. They're so removed from the, the magic of the philosophy and the principles and the mindsets and the spiritual components that are necessary for you to even generate the power, let alone move properly. Uh, karate, Taekwondo, Krav Maga, Sambo, MMA. Oh my God, MMA. God, it used to be such a beautiful sport and now it's this own system of just math, which is just BJJ, Muay Thai, and boxing and wrestling mixed together in this very if this, then this practice. And it's like, yeah, it's great. But at the end of the day, it's who's stronger and who has the better mindset is always going to win. And that's why the fights last the way they do. And that's why they all look the same. And that's why they all feel the same when you watch it. And that's why ratings are down so low because everybody's learning and practicing and training the same way in a very mathematical practice. Cause that's what the West does is remove everything down into a studied way because they're like, Oh, this is the best. Look, it's proven in this way. This is the most efficient. Now everybody's doing it. So now everybody's the best. So everything's going to look the same. And it's just the fucking Pythagorean theorem. Nobody likes that. Nobody cares. People want art. So then the fighters that do something a little bit different, a little bit more artsy, a little bit more traditional, they come out and they just wipe the floor with the competition. Everyone's like, wow, have you seen this guy or that guy do their thing? And it's just like, yeah, that's traditional. 
they have a spiritual element that is been, that hasn't been removed from their practice. They have a philosoph- philosophical component that hasn't been removed. And that's the beauty of martial arts is it shows you what you're capable of. It shows you your limitations. And then every time you break through and you're like, yes, I have done it. I have accomplished it. I am amazing now. You get side kicked in the face and you're like, fuck, I still have more work to do. <laughs> and that's the beauty of it. You look at these old articles and these guys write about how traditional Chinese martial arts you could dedicate lifetimes to and you'll never scratch the surface. Or how you can dedicate your time and effort and it will always give you what you give it. Like the, the, the f- philosophical, beautiful, flowery language around it all and the beautiful, flowery movements around it all are hidden and they're in plain sight and when you hear the secrets you're like well duh but then you're like well why didn't i think about that it's because we're looking for this magical answer and it's all within us there's only so many ways you can move the body there's only so many ways you can throw a punch or a kick but at the end of the day the real practice of martial arts is learning how to overcome the mind's limiting beliefs on what the body's capable of and every movie you watch that you love is an under, underdog story about somebody overcoming their pain, but then you'll never go and work out because you don't want to go through pain. You'll never go and do a traditional martial arts class because it doesn't look cool and it hurts and you're sore for days and you're doing it wrong and everybody else is doing it right and you can't, but you'll never go through that. But you love watching other people do it and you wish that you could do it and that internal battle will haunt you until the day you die so yeah yeah that's that is um i agree on the on the martial art part where you said about um that it the the traditional ways were um more fluid if if i i I say that correctly um That is also something I uh, rec- uh, recognize from Ido Portal. You know him? Yes, his stuff is excellent. Exactly, and and that is because I'm I practice MMA, but with with his philosophy in mind. That of course you have what he calls the container. Yeah. Um, but the problem with most of martial arts and science and everything in life is that. That the container gets the goal for people. Yeah. Um, um, it's it's the same with. I see a lot of when people ask him questions like, "So, um, what do you think is the best way to do this?" And yeah. then he answers, "Well, you could explore this, or you could explore this, or you could explore yes. this." And then he says, and "Then the, the interviewer is more like, okay, so we should do this.' No, no, that's not what I'm saying." <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's moving from container to container to container, but yeah. um, f- move freely between those things, and that's what I recognize from your story as well. Um, is that once again, it has to be in motion, and it should not be a motion. Uh, that's what I uh, what I love about your story, and uh, it's a big compliment that I hear your story and Ido you know, Portal story, and they. Uh, overlap um oh, that's, thank you that, that yeah. means a lot yeah it's well, been a long time to cultivate all this so yeah and and that is um one of the reasons as well why i wanted to invite you because indeed you have knowledge you have all the kind of stuff in the world but um like i said in my invitation you em- embody it and that is one of the most important things i believe in in this journey is great exploring and um yeah that's what you have, I- you have nutritionists teaching nutritional advice that are obese and if you're an obese nutritionist i'm not knocking you but take care of yourself i don't care what the medical condition is that's causing you to be obese there's a solution for it just because you haven't found it or just because modern science doesn't say that there's a way for it to be solved There is a solution for it. There's no reason that you should be giving nutritional advice to somebody if you can't follow it and take care of your own health. I mean, that's just my opinion. And it's the same thing with psychology, with coaching, with fighting. Yes, you can pass on knowledge to people 
If you aren't living it yourself, there's nothing wrong with that. But you have to be telling them that you're passing on knowledge with the inability to practice it yourself. I see so many coaches teaching fighting that have never fought, that claim their style is too deadly to practice, that will just blatantly lie through their teeth about what they're capable of. That's fine. You can still teach amazing martial arts. You could still teach people how to overcome themselves. You could teach all of that, and that's great. But don't teach somebody that if somebody's coming at you with a knife to do this crazy routine that is going to save them because now they're going to get stabbed. And that's giving this false sense of security that's going to get somebody killed because of your ego, because of your ignorance. Like, it's just so crazy to me that people are so scared to admit where they're right or wrong or competent or not competent. If you're going to teach, teach from your level, and that's it. I don't claim that I know how or what medications you should or shouldn't be on because that is not my scope of practice. That is not my expertise. I don't think it'll ever be my expertise because it's not something that I even care to put in my brain. If that's something that somebody, if I get a patient with 17 medications and I throw those medications into the website that tells me if there's any contraindications and there's seven of them that are a high risk and should not be taken at the same time, bet your ass I'm going to send that person to somebody that understands the pharmacology of all those things and lets that patient know if they should or shouldn't be on all these. Because nine times out of 10, the three doctors that have prescribed all this didn't do an an ounce of research and they're just prescribing it because they're supposed to. And now this person's having all kinds of crazy side effects because these medications are conflicting with each other. And it just, it blows my mind the system that we're in, but I'm not telling them what they should or shouldn't be doing because it's not my job. It's not my skills. It's not my experience. It's not my scope and it's okay. And if I don't get a single penny from that patient, fine. My job when I took an oath as a practitioner was to protect and heal. That's it. And that's what every doctor takes as an oath. And the ones that are prescribing surgeries to people that should not be getting surgeries, that are prescribing medications to people that should not be receiving medications, that are, oh my gosh, that are doing these things, they should, their license should be removed. They should be tried. They should be going to jail. Like this is crazy. The world that we live in to where uh, certain doctors aren't allowed to adjust pay. Like, chiropractors upregulate the immune system. Our adjustments help you during flu season. Okay. That's proven by science. You can look at all the studies. Adjustments help boost your immune system to help deal with the common cold and the flu and other. um, Anyways, the, the fact of the matter is that we could not adjust patients during the COVID pandemic because of the fear of fret spreading it, even though we were a year in and showing how safe it was to go through this process is asinine. But then you have doctors nowadays that are performing surgeries that are changing children's gender that are irreversible and that they are legally allowed to do that is insane. And I I don't care which side of the spectrum you're on. I'm not saying yes or no for any of that. So I want to be clear about that. But I want to be clear about the hypocrisy of where we're drawing lines that this child can't even send a picture of their own genitals to somebody without it be considered um, child pornography. But they can have another person surgically remove those genitals and cause irreversible damage that can never be changed again is legal makes no sense and the fact that this is the paradigm that we live in right now is insane to me so at the end of the day we need to be practicing what we're preaching and it means a lot that you notice that in me and if anything can come across i implore all the medical professionals watching this to please start practicing what you're preaching or stop practicing it Because if we don't start making the differences, the laws will never change, the outcomes will never change, and we're just continuing down this path where we're not practicing the oaths that we took. And if you can sleep at night in that way, then that's fine. That's your life. That's your soul that you have to reckon with. But I'm not going to do it, and I'm not going to preach that it's okay. That's a boundary that I'm going to draw a line for you. And I'm going to hold you, not you, but you, the medical practitioners, accountable for that oath you took. And 
we as people should hold that accountable. We should hold them all accountable for that. And the best way we can do that is with our wallets and with our attention. Stop giving them attention. Stop giving them money. Whether or not you believe in them or not, whether or not they make you happy, sad, angry, stop giving them their attention because as human beings, we need to be accepted into a tribe. And if they stop feeling accepted, they're going to have to look at themselves finally. And once they look at themselves, they'll make the changes necessary to change. And until we start holding them accountable for those oaths, nothing's going to change. We're just going to keep allowing it to happen. No matter what we say, yell, cry about, fight about, not going to make a difference. I agree. Yeah, we have. We definitely have to stand up for those almost cruelties. Uh, they yeah. are harming people, and um, yeah, it's it's not contributing to to anybody. So no, um, no I, I I definitely are. I'm on the same page. Um, but to expand that consciousness, it is uh, not only for standing up for that, but to uh, we we spoke about acupuncture we spoke about um chiropractor being a chiropractor martial arts um i'm not looking for another container yeah. but um how can people um unravel that 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 the beginning of to to start on that on their journey yeah um so, perfect response to this Life right now is like an overgrown jungle. And the second you see it, you're like, I don't want to deal with that. First initial response as a human, you just want to burn it all down. Right? That's what you feel. You hear about this. The political agendas, the, uh, the food systems, the medical systems. You're just so angry. You're like, how would I even begin to unravel this mess? All these vines and overgrowth and decay. I'm just going to burn it down. Fuck it all. You know, That's not how we do it. That mentality is because you don't understand how to channel your anger into the positive energetic power that it is your your sadness into that positive energetic power that it is so you start by taking a deep breath first of all and understanding that it's not your responsibility to untangle the jungle second you start learning compassion for yourself because you can't show compassion to the world until you have compassion for yourself whether that's through yoga acupuncture, martial arts, working out at the gym, uh, running, swimming, bicycling. You start learning what you're physically capable of. You start pushing your physical capability slowly while combining the breath, while combining the mind-muscle connection, awareness of how your mind is abusing yourself as you're learning these things. Instead of just subconsciously going through it, and subconsciously abusing yourself, be present to it. Martial arts taught me that. There's a million other ways to do it. I like the martial arts, so I'm always going to be partial to it. But figure out what works best for you. I tell my patients all the time, I'm not going to give you a prescription movement pattern because if you don't like it, you're not going to do it. And then if you do it anyways, when you don't like it, you're not going to get anything out of it. So I tell people, you have to find what you enjoy. Even if you never get good at it, as long as you're having fun in the learning process, it's going to allow you to learn that mental block that's constantly preventing you from learning in a safe, easy way. Once you have compassion for yourself learning something and being bad, then you can start the harder stuff. Then you can go pick up a class that's more difficult where you're feeling more embarrassed in an external environment. Then you can slowly start peeling away the vines that are wrapped around you, that are strangling you. Because that's all you're responsible for. The second you worry about the world, you're already suffocating. You're already deficient in everything you need. How are you supposed to save anybody if you don't have oxygen yourself? It's that whole plain mask scenario. Like You have to fix you first. And as selfish as that sounds, it's the most selfless thing you can do because it's the most difficult path that we have. It's the scariest. It's the hardest. It's the most difficult by far. Nobody talks about the dark side of enlightenment, but fuck, does it hurt? It's not easy. You start realizing everything's your fault, and then you just go down this spewing of I'm sorry to the world, and that's not helpful to anybody because we're extremists, you know? So you you start by going slow. And then, and then once you have compassion, then once you understand what your body's capable of, then when you start realizing 
those mental blocks that you have, you'll start noticing it in the rest of the world. And you get to start slowly peeling back the vines off of other people because you're clean and you don't actually have to do it. You just showing up is more than enough because then people see you and they're like, damn, you're a beautiful tree. Why do I got all these vines on me? Like, I'm going to take this off. How, how'd you take this one off? And you're like, oh, I just did this. And like, oh, that doesn't work for me. Hey, you, how'd you take this one off? Oh, oh, that works. Cool. Thank you. Like we get to be the healing mirrors for everybody. We get to be the, the story that other people get to experience and they get to learn that. And then all of a sudden, if enough people wake up, if enough of the consciousness is truly healed, not just mask healed, where it's like, oh, I'm spiritually enlightened guru, but I'm still dealing with all my shit. Like I'm still covered in my vines. I just don't look like it anymore. You know, like truly healed, truly cleansed. Then you get to start understanding that like, oh, I see. We get to start healing the world together. And then we get to start working on the jungle as an army instead of as an individual crazy person fighting this uphill battle alone. I think that's a beautiful perspective. And we definitely have to start there. Yeah. Um, but what I um, take from your story is that um, you always have to be in connection with yourself, but definitely also with the rest of the world. Um, and that you have to just keep keep yeah, keep moving. Sounds so practical. Um, yeah. But in relationship to the world and in motion as well. Uh, and I, I believe from what I hear from your story and from my experience as well, is that you will get the answers along the way as yep. long as you stay connected to the people around you through nature, yep. uh, the world, and keep moving. Uh, that's that's something I believe. And uh, I, th I think that um, I take that away from what you were saying. Um, there was there was one other thing I wanted to ask you. Yeah. Costa Rica is uh, like uh, the the land of plant medicine. <laughs> oh my gosh, it is <laughs> right. Um, maybe it's an ignorant question, but did you get involved with plant medicine? <laughs> so it's funny the retreat I'm building out there. I describe as plant medicine without the plants. It's oh, really? nature medicine. Yeah. So I look at plant medicine with the utmost respect. Um, and I feel like it is not respected the way it's supposed to be right now because there's so many people that want to rush the healing without doing the work. And it's exactly what you described. You're like, everybody attributes martial arts with pain. So that's why they don't like to do it. You know, people attribute plant medicine with the easy way to get the answers. And that's not what it's for. It is a window to confirmation of the magic around the world. Like it, it shows you, it teaches you, it confirms what you're seeing is reality. And that what the world has been telling you that you feel is a lie is actually a lie. And what you feel about how the reality is that's real, but people call you crazy for is actually real. It's a window. It's amazing medicine, but like any medicine, it's not meant to be overused. It's something that's supposed to be respected. It's supposed to be used with intent. And then it's supposed to be integrated and applied and utilized. And there's too many people rushing to it without their body being ready for it. And it's extremely dangerous to be opening your mind up to things that your body is not capable of. Imagine plugging an electrical um, source, some kind of item into a power outlet that's too powerful. It's going to short circuit and fry. It's the same thing. You're, you're forcing a body and mind to get tapped into a universal consciousness that you're, you literally have avoided your entire life. You, you haven't do dove into it through pain. You haven't dove into it through internal work, through journaling, through meditation, nothing. You're just diving right in because somebody said, hey, come do my weekend ayahuasca retreat that I have 
that you haven't detoxed anything from, that you haven't done the proper ceremonies around, and that we have no integration plan outside of let's just talk about your experience and then good luck because I have another one next weekend. You know, there's a time and a place for everything. There's a proper way to utilize it. And all I'm saying is that plant medicine should be respected, whether it's psychedelics, whether it's something as extreme as ayahuasca or iboga. There's proper ways to utilize these things that people can get so much benefit from. But you have to understand that it's a window. And if you want to walk through the door after you see the lessons, you have to implement them. So at the end of the day, you're going to have to do everything I'm talking about. You're going to have to face your darkness. You're going to have to face your demons. You're going to have to clear your own body of all the vines that are tangled around and suffocating you. You're going to have to understand how to strengthen your body. You're going to have to understand your boundaries. You're going to have to understand how to deal with your emotions. Plant medicine is not going to give that to you. It's going to show it to you. And then you're going to have to apply it. So the retreat that my partner and I are building is all focused around preparing the body for these type of experiences. If you want to do them, then this is going to teach your body how to be ready for it. If you want to integrate them, then this is going to teach your body how to integrate them. But are we going to be facilitating plant medicines? No. Again, that's not my expertise. I respect it way too much to be facilitating something that would take years of shamanistic training in the jungle to be facilitating. If you're getting uh, guidance through ceremonies that are from people that aren't that practiced, that well-versed, I wouldn't recommend it because you're dealing with things that are so far beyond the human understanding. Um, I have done ayahuasca. I've done um, a large dose of mushrooms. And these experiences were life-changing um, to the point where I was almost terrified of what reality looked like moving forwards. And I've done a lot of the physical work before I did these, and still it almost broke me. Um, there's still moments where my reality fractures a little bit, and it terrifies me because these medicines are so potent and powerful. And to be brought through these ceremonies without that level of respect, without that level, level of preparation, would be like forcing you to do an 800 pound deadlift until completion, whether or not you've ever done a deadlift before. That's what plant medicine is. It's like you are going to, you're start to finish going to lift this weight. I don't care how your body breaks in the process. It's going to know what it feels like to lift this. And that's, that's what it takes you through. And it's powerful. It causes a ton of healing because it brings a ton of awareness, which is what life's all about, that perspective shift. Once you have that perspective shift, you can start understanding, you can start implementing you can't hit a target if you don't see it. So it has its time and place, but it has to be respected. It has to be utilized properly. And I can refer you to some amazing healers and uh, medicine, plant medicine practitioners that can guide you through these things, but it's not for me to do. I'll teach your body how to be prepared for it. I'll teach your body how to integrate it because I myself have gone through both of those and I understand my component, my story of it, but I do not for a second assume that I understand the intricacies enough to guide the countless facets of possibilities that will happen for each in unique individual going through their enlightenment and awakening because I'm just one soul in a, an ocean of experiences that the collective consciousness is trying to learn and understand. Like it's, <laughs> that's, that's for somebody else to deal with. I'm here just to make sure that you get to enjoy the human experience as deeply as possible. Yeah. It, it, I think it's beautiful and um, that you remove yourself away from being, w wanting to be that guy to guide people through a plant medicine uh, journey. It's not for everybody. And I think it's, it's shows your self awareness that you stepped away from that and that you, uh, pick the role that fits you. Um, yeah. when, when I, can't, will the can't serve, I can't serve the world doing what I'm not meant to do. There's mm -hmm. too many people trying to do that right now. Too many people trying to do everything. I'm really good at the things that I do, which is a lot. Like there's a lot of little niche things that I'm really good at, but those are the things that I'm good at. 
And that's what I do. And the second I experience something that's amazing that I'm not good at, I'm like, all right, this is in my toolbox of referrals because I'm a spring. I'm, I'm not this dam that's blocking and holding everything in. I experience what I experience and I overflow it out onto the world. I can't serve anybody any other way. So if there's another spring out there that's giving different nutrients that somebody else needs, hey, I know it now. Hey, you, you go there. My spring's good for this. This spring's good for that. This spring's good for that. Now, all of a sudden, the world is freaking nutrient-rich, filled springs everywhere of people giving their gifts the way it's supposed to. And we're working in this beautiful ecosystem of abundance instead of, oh, no, I do everything. Kind of this, kind of that, kind of this. No, that doesn't work. And there's Just because I could doesn't mean it's going to be beneficial. So, yeah. Well, yeah, like I said, that that shows uh, confidence and self-awareness and indeed the um, abundant mindset that you can deliver all you can already deliver so much and you can serve so much in so many ways. Mm -hmm. Um, When will your retreat center be? Will that be ready? So the retreat that we're building is not going to be a center because nature is what's going to heal. We're not doing a center. Okay. Uh, the main thing that we're doing is we're bringing people into the jungle. We're allowing them to feel the ecosystem, to see the magic, to see how things actually cycle and work and how nature will inherently always create a closed loop system around it. And then we're going to show people their own strength. We're going to have them realize what a sacred yes and a sacred no means. We're going to have them learn their intuition. We're going to teach them how to be confident in their decisions and then not beat themselves up over their decisions to be discerning and then learn to live with the consequences of that. And then realize that there's a lot of power and lessons that comes in those lessons. Um, Everything is going to be tailored to you having the choice of what you're capable of and trusting that. So I'm going to be doing some health work my partner's going to be doing her health healing, breath work, sound bowl healing, that kind of stuff. But we're also going to be taking people on excursions where safety is your responsibility, not ours. So we will let you know what we're doing. We're going here. These are the dangers. These are what you watch out for. This is how you navigate it. But there's not a hospital anywhere nearby. There's no uh, safety systems built into the walls as we're doing these hikes. So if you fall, you fall. Like that's your responsibility to trust, understand, and decide whether or not you are capable to do these excursions. And at any point, you are welcome to stop. We have extra guides with us that can take you back or um, wait with you so you're not alone. And you go through that process because there's power in those lessons. And nowhere in the U.S. do you have these experiences. There's a lot of false fear treatments where you're always protected there's always ambulances or emergencies nearby or some kind of safety harness it's a it's a false sense of security and you never get to truly understand what it feels like to have your own life in your own hands and there's nothing more freeing than realizing that you're not scared of something that could ultimately take your life and then to trust that you can do it and then to overcome it that feeling of intuition is so powerful and that's what we're missing on our day-to-day life and that's what we're going to be teaching people is how to learn yourself how to talk to yourself how to differentiate pain that's good pain that's bad fear that's good fear that's bad because at the end of the day it's not good or bad that's just things that we put in our mind all it is is degrees on a spectrum of what we're okay with and what we're not okay with And this is where most people live, a very narrow path of what's okay and what's scary, what's okay and what's painful. And what I want to show people is that the more you push these boundaries, look how much more room there is to explore life. And imagine what your life could be capable of if you don't have any of these limitations anymore. Imagine what life's capable of if you don't care about air conditioning, if you don't care if you have enough food or water. Imagine what life could be like if you didn't care about being sore or not sore. It's a, it's a weird concept that most people listening probably can't even fathom. 
to be in pain and be happy. But when you're in these jungles and you're surrounded by trees and wildlife and you just saw a snake that if bit you, you'd be dead before you could even get back on the trail, let alone. And it didn't bother you because there's a respect and you, you understand how to naturally walk through these places that's not disrupting it. And you can pick fruit from a tree and eat it and spit out the seeds knowing that that's what nature intended because now the seeds are going to grow another tree in those locations because of the mixture with your saliva. Like you, you get to learn so much about how we're meant to live that you get to decide moving forwards every decision with confidence. And that helps with everything, man. It, it gives you the, the self-awareness you're complimenting me on. It, it wasn't earned from books. It wasn't earned from degrees. It wasn't earned from people saying, good job, or you're stupid. It wasn't earned from any of that. It was earned from getting in the ring across from people that had 10 plus years of fighting experience on me that looked like they could just kill me and then staying relaxed in that, that situation. It took me losing to people like that in front of all my friends and family and knowing that that person would have killed me if there wasn't a ref involved and to deal with that mindset that I had to go through. It took me going into the jungle and almost falling off a ledge and saving myself to know what I'm capable of. You know, like you go through these moments in life where it's actually life or death, where a car accident almost takes your life and you're still alive and you're like, why me? Well, why me? Because I have a purpose. Well, I'm wasting it watching TV. I'm wasting it playing video games. I'm wasting it drinking at the bar. I'm wasting it doing these drugs. I'm wasting it not chasing this passion anymore. I'm like, well, duh, I'm wasting it. I don't know what my passion is. Well, you have that choice now to continue living the life you currently do that you hate but is good enough because it's full of enough superficial pleasures that get you by or you start looking inwards. Like, what is my passion? What brings me joy? Where, where do I serve? And in, serving doesn't have to be healing people. Serving could be creating a product that m- makes journaling easier. You know, serving could be making a, a product that allows farming to be a little simpler and more natural. Like there's, there's no limitation to what your purpose is on this planet besides your own personal belief on what your purpose is to this planet. And a lot of people rush instantly to like, I need to be a healer. Because that's what they saw the healer that woke them up doing. And that's not everybody's journey. I tried to avoid healing. The only reason I got into medicine was because I was trying to learn how to hurt people better. Mm -hmm. I was trying to make fighters better. I was trying to like keep us fighting so we could train to become better warriors. Like I got into martial arts because I wanted to learn how to hurt people. I was tired of being bullied. I wanted to be strong and powerful so nobody could pick on me again. You know, that's what I wanted not to talk about this, not to help pregnant women have better uh, deliveries. Like that was never the goal, but that's where I'm at. So as you start looking inwards, it's going to take you down some weird freaking paths, man. But you'll find the answers you're looking for if you're willing to look at the scariest shit inside you with that fear, with that deep breath of confidence. Like you're trying to teach me a lesson. What is it? What is it? And just keep asking why like a child. Just keep exploring it and you'll find it. It's inevitable. It's because it's, it's right there. And when you find it, you're going to cry and laugh at the same time. And that's how you know you're really healing because it's just so silly that it's been there the whole time. And it's going to be this overwhelming sadness, but laughter of joy because you're like, ah, I, I finally found it. But oh my gosh, this whole time. Like you're, you're grieving this version of you that's caused so much pain to yourself and to others unconsciously while simultaneously having so much joy for this rebirth of the new version of you that's more aligned with your purpose. And the only thing, piece of advice I can give is understand that that journey never ends. Like, yeah, you might be looking at me like I'm further ahead of you, but I have my death. I had my death and rebirth last night again. Like I still go through new ones. Because to navigate this world, you have to put on a new mask every single time. That's the only way that you fit into this world. And 
as you give yourself permission to constantly go down this path, you're going to understand that it's never going to end. And that's the beautiful part because that would be boring journey if it finished. (laughs) It is, it is truly beautiful. And, um, somebody asked me like yesterday, don't you get tired of self-development? Of course, that is not what we're doing and uh, (laughs) discussing it right now, but, um, I I answered, um, of course, when self-development gets the goal, it gets boring and it, it gets something like, don't you get sick and tired of trying? But yeah. it, it it is not the goal. It is the fascination and curiosity of how it constantly flows like you described last 90 minutes. Um, and... Yeah, that fascination is eternal. Uh, yeah. Because if you if you uh, stop uh, thinking in good or bad or or the the crying or the laughing, it is the same. Yeah. And um, <laughs> if you experience it in the same way, like it 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 comes and goes, and uh, you you give it the attention in the moment that it arises, and it's uh, when it flows. Yeah. It's the most beautiful thing that ever happens, uh, yeah, that happens no, in life. You're, you're spot on. And the problem with self-development as a goal is that comes from a, a mindset that you're not enough. And that's why people are like, aren't you tired of that? It's they, They're looking at it as they're not enough, so they have to find something externally to make them enough. And that's why it's exhausting, because you're constantly searching. Because you'll never find anything that makes you enough, because you're already enough. And nobody believes that. And so the process of self-development isn't searching for self-development. It isn't to improve yourself. I don't give a shit what people think about me anymore. And that was not true a year ago, let alone 10 years ago. Um, It took a very long time to cultivate that. And the way you cultivate that is by understanding that it's not my responsibility for how people see me or think of me. And it's not my responsibility to make myself better to fit into a world in any certain way. I am enough, meaning that my journey is for me and me alone. And so as I go down my path to figure out what I'm doing and what I want to do, I mean, I could, when I was in business school and I created Beast Chiropractic, my teacher literally gave me a D. He tried to fail me on that test because he's like, your business that you're creating it's too many things. It doesn't make any sense. There's no cohesiveness. I can't tell you how many people have told me that, oh man, that makes so much sense. It's beautiful what you created. How did like final, like it makes yeah, like the, the stark contrast really showed me that nobody can see your dream or your vision besides you. And you won't even see it inside you until you're willing to look at the bad parts of you that you think are bad, which aren't really bad. They're just repressed. So as you start letting yourself experience things and showing yourself what you're capable of and showing your body you're safe in all of these different emotions that you've once perceived as good or bad and realize that it's just part of being human, then you get to navigate the world differently. Then you get to be like, oh, that... That outcome that I just had hurt somebody. Is that because it's their responsibility to be protected? Or was it my responsibility to be more forthcoming about my boundaries? Like their reaction now is my fault. Oh, it's because I wasn't completely honest about where my boundary was. Or I didn't even know where my boundary was. Now I have compassion for them. Because now their anger towards me is justified. Because how... How can I be mad at them for respecting a boundary that I never taught them? You know, that's what true self-development is. It's starting to learn my issues, my problems, my mind muscle, my mind body, my mind soul connections and how they inter talk with each other. And then the self-development just naturally comes without trying. It's, it becomes a symptom. So like what you're going through, you're not tired because it doesn't take energy to find yourself because you're already yourself. You're just letting go of things. It energizes you. If, if you're on a self-development path and you're tired, 
it's because you're adding and you already added enough throughout your life. You, you need to be letting stuff go, my friend. Because once you find yourself as whole, then you can start adding things for fun. Then it's not a challenge anymore. But until then, you're going to be exhausted. It's going to be an uphill battle that you don't need to be doing. Go downstream. It's beautiful. There's horses down there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, Dr. Tom, where can people find you? Um, right now, Instagram is one of the easiest ways at Beast Cairo, B E A S T C H I R O. Um, my website's going through some remodelings right now because I'm totally changing how I'm doing everything. It's beastchiro.com. Uh, you can see some of my older content on there. Right now, I'm modifying a lot of my work to be hybrid. So it'll be, I'm creating an educational platform to teach these philosophies, um, show people how to slowly go this path instead of having it be so extreme because it doesn't need to be extreme. A lot of people I've been waking up to this initially try to blow their life up and burn it all down, quit their jobs, divorce their spouses. It's like, chill. That's not, that's not what I'm trying to show you guys. Like, <laughs> relax. <laughs> so, so I've had to dial it back. If you wake people up too quick, they go to the extreme opposite polarity, thinking that that's good without ever trying the journey along the way. And you're meant to walk to the mountain peak, see the view, and then see a different mountain. And you're like, oh, I want to walk there. You can't just jump to there <laughs> because you don't even know if the path there is going to be one you like. So you have to slow down, go back down, look inwards, and then you can start the new path to the new ascension. So like if you hate your job, yeah, some people need to just quit. Some people need the extremes. But also some people have kids and responsibilities and all this other stuff. So there's a slow way to figure out how to start applying boundaries to be safe and whatnot. So um, that's all going to be coming to the website soon. So just keep an eye out for that. Beastchiro.com. Um, I think you also should write a book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that'll be coming. That'll be coming. <laughs> I, I, have, I have a bunch of notes that I could literally just print out and send to you. And that'd probably be good enough for a book as it is. It's pretty ridiculous. I've, I've done a really good job. Um, journaling almost to an extreme at points that I had to cut back on because it was starting to be a new mask where I was doing good by note taking the process, but then it was mm -hmm. preventing me from doing the other things. So that's what mm -hmm. I mean. Like you're constantly looking in at yourself, seeing where am I, my own problem, you know? So I did a pretty good job of notating my mind as I was going through this process. And it was, It was a wild ride, a lot of imposter syndrome, a lot of insecurities, a lot of worries that I had to overcome to get here. And I, I hope that I do a good job of sharing that in the future, not to be like, poor me, or this is why I'm superior, but to show my story in a way that will resonate with people to, so they can realize that this is the journey. It's a rough path. Like the, the path to the mountain isn't, this excavated like uh, roller coaster that you just get to sit on and it's air conditioned. And you get to enjoy and look around. Like you gotta, you're walking up it with a machete and there's pitfalls and cutbacks and all this that you have to go through. So I hope that sharing that will help um, a little bit more. The best thing is um, if you're interested, DM me your email or, um, You can send me a text. You'll see my information on the website. That phone number, you can shoot me a text with your email. Within the next week or so, I'm going to be sending out a mass offer for the retreat that we're building in October in Costa Rica. It's going to be roughly a week long. We haven't decided how many people we're going to have yet. We're working with the guides there to make sure that the local families that we're going to be supporting can cook for that many people. And we're looking at between eight to 12. We want to be able to move quickly, get to the places without it being uh, too overwhelming. So it's going to be very small group, very intimate group for the teachings to be processed and practical because the, the whole trip is going to be on the person's responsibility. For instance, we're not going to be um, providing any way around dietary restrictions. So if you have any type of dietary concerns or restrictions, you have two options. One, you can eat the local foods or two, you can do a fruit, a fruit fast that will bring you through. Those are it. 
if you have anything else out of that, it's your responsibility to bring or accommodate yourself accordingly to get through the retreats because this is all about creating an ecosystem of abundance. And one of the ways we're going to be doing that is by having um, the retreat orchestrated around families that aren't in a very scarcity state with finances. So all the dinners, all the lunches, all the breakfasts are going to be at different local families that are in a financial hardship because of medical bills or job loss or something like that. And so us being there and them cooking and providing these meals from locally grown foods that they gardened and they provided to us then allows us to pay them and give them months worth of money to sustain these bills that have been strangling them for a long time. Same thing with the guides that we're using. They're all very uh, spiritually aligned with us in our methodologies and our mindsets. So when we go on these excursions, we're paying for them for the whole day. Whether or not we're using them for two hours, three hours, the whole day we have them booked for. So they can either be a part of the journey with us that day or they can be with their family that day, or they can rest that day. But I don't want them to have to worry about finances, why they're there. And then that way, when we go on a trip, if it's two hours or 10 hours, they are with us. If we need to stop to do something longer, we're not being rushed along because they have three more groups that they have to do. All of this is specifically tailored to bring abundance, relaxation, and spiritual growth and awareness to everybody that's a part of it, not just the people paying to be a part of the retreat and to be healed by the retreat, but also the people providing these magical experiences that are locally present, that are giving so much knowledge to us and taking us to these magical places that are off the beaten path and not your typical tourist locations. So I'm really excited for what we're creating. It's so in line with my vision, with my partner's vision, I can't tell you how many mentors of mine have told me that it's not possible to create what we're creating. And here we are doing it. And it just feels so good to have trusted that intuition that it's possible. And so I'm really excited to to make it come to fruition. So if anybody's interested, find a way to DM me either through beastkyro at gmail.com, my website, beastkyro.com, Instagram, beastkyro. You, You can find me. And then please reach out. I'm interested to hear if you got any treasures, any comments, concerns, questions. I love talking about this stuff. As you can see, I never shut up. You, know, you get me you get me going. I, I'll just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm happy you did. Um, I definitely happy you did. I, I even think after almost two hours, uh, we only scratched the surface. So uh, maybe You're we'll correct. run it back somewhere <laughs> when, when next year, maybe. Um, yeah, let's do it. I would love to talk with you again, York. You're, you're an amazing soul. It's It's been a pleasure talking with you. Like, I knew the second you messaged me, this was a good connection. Thank you. Thank you. I, I felt the same. And um, I hope all of the listeners um, absorb every every second, every moment. Um, I hope to see you one day, talk to you one day again. And um, please keep doing what you're doing and I hope all the power, all the light, everything uh, flows your way. And thank you for this conversation. Thank you, brother. I have no choice. It's my purpose. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) I tried to avoid it for a long, long time. (laughs) You can't. (laughs) You know what you're doing, brother. It's, it's beautiful. This, this creating a container for people to share their messages. That's what the world's all about right now because there's so much, uncertainty there's so much snake oil salesmen out there um you creating a space to transmit knowledge that you're passionate with instead of just doing it out of a a space of needing to like that's so powerful and that's what the the listeners are looking for is the fact that you're calling on people that resonate with you instead of just because they have a title or an expectation, or a, a message that aligns with ratings. And people feel that nowadays. They feel it with the news. They feel it with podcasts. They feel it like people are starting to become discerning on when knowledge is in their interest or it isn't, when knowledge is true and when it isn't. And in the next few years, with the, the growth of AI, I think that that intuition, that discernment is going to be so critical, and it's going to be inevitably felt and learned 
because people are already experiencing it right now. Yeah, I agree. There has to be a counterpart to all the yeah. digitalization and stuff. <laughs> so um, let's we'll, stand we'll up for again. that. Yes, we'll thank you so much. Again. Thank you. <laughs>